So how do we get our vivarium to grow like all of this? Well, I think that I've kind of managed it. Kind of. Let me show you. Right, so we're back in the room. We're back with Charlie. I've turned these lights on because I thought it might be dark for me. Now I'm thinking I might be a bit overexposed, but we'll roll with it. Let's look at Charlie. So Charlie's vivarium is a three by two by two with, with grass on the floor and stuff. A kitchen board who's meant to be like a, a board to flip in nature. And Charlie's up on his custom reptile habitats. Uh, sorry, universal rock sent by custom reptile habitats background. So. Charlie is a typical Kylie King. He's going to come flying forward as soon as I try to open this door. So let's see how this goes. I do have a mouse to do an offering to keep him occupied, but we shall see how this goes. Don't be a twat. Don't do it. I'm opening the door. Here we go. I might be defrosting a mouse for no reason. Who knows? Right. So little bit of a story about this vivarium then. So this vivarium I mixed a bag of topping soil or potting mix shall I say but it, it was potting mix and not topsoil and I mixed it with a bag of Leo Life. Then what I did was mix it really thoroughly and spread it in the enclosure. Put all my equipment in and my water bowls and all of this so that when I wanted it to grow, I wanted it to grow up and around all the sticks and stuff so it looks really grown in. And you can see seeds here where I've planted some more or sown some more. And all I did was grab a big bag of lawn seed repair kit and just sow it in there, as well as watercress, which had grown really well, and then sprayed heavily for like the next like few days to water it. And I took a sprig of mint from the garden which you can see is here. Um, and that's growing really, really well. And I used a log at the back there to wedge it under another ledge so that he couldn't dig it out. So the Kali King, he's really like inquisitive. So when he wants to like investigate something, he'll root around the new thing. So I didn't want him to dig it up. You, you can see that he's been trying to, there's like dig holes everywhere. I think you can actually see the dig hole that he started. Down there, he started, he started digging around down there to try and dig under it. But also behind it, I think he started as well. Like, he started digging back here. He just gave it a go. Oh no, I've aroused... I've aroused Charlie, who's basking magnificent. Charlie's basking magnificent. Look how beautiful Charlie looks, just basking under the UV. Up top. What's really cool is that I've got the UV along the back. So there's a gradient of UV down these ledges. And you can clearly see that he is selecting for the UV there right beneath it stretched out. The LEDs are up top and we'll talk about that in a second. Now I think the biggest success for why this works is the fact that it's all these LEDs. So up top, it's screen top. So I'm also using this as a bit of a storage area, excuse me. But I've got two jungle dawns up here, so one, two at the front, they're all linked up. I've had to add more visible light to make sure that the grass can grow. So the grass really needs this high amount of visible light, otherwise you're not going to get very far. But also, I think a lot of the time that I've a lot of the times that I've failed in the past with grass, it's because I've tried to do it in a vivarium with a screen top. Whereas the heat gathers and the ambient air temperature rises and I think it's just too warm of an ambient air temperature for the grass to survive. So in this vivarium the screen top up here obviously releases all the excess hot air and it comes up and goes and then you get all of this growth looking plentiful and healthy. I think it looks fantastic. I love the way it's growing up and around the board. I'm hoping over time that this board looks really knackered and rotting, so it looks like a board that's been left out to flip. That's what I was going for with this sort of like California coastal herping area archetype. And I have got some aloe vera growing there as well. So hopefully that grows really well. And then we'll have like a nice like ecosystem growing in here. This plant at the back is a curry plant, but it died. And I've still put it in there because I think 
even if it dies, it still looks good. But what I'm hoping for is that even though all this grass might die back here, even if it dies, I think this mint is going to take off. So I think it's going to be the saving grace of this entire setup. But the really cool thing about this as well is this watercress, this shot up and like, I don't know, the sprouts were showing overnight. So even if it constantly dies, it's like 79 pence a packet of watercress seeds. So I'm just going to keep re just to keep the look. It doesn't matter to me. And I've, I think I've shown now that I can keep it alive for weeks at a time. So I'm just going to keep re -sowing. It doesn't matter. And that's what I've done with the grass. So let's look at what the lawn seed is. Let's put this here. So all it is, is literally the first thing I grabbed from the range, in all honesty. It's doff fast acting lawn seed. And I'm pretty sure that anything you use would work as long as you re meet the right conditions for it not to overheat and just die. So it's meant to be direct sow and you just like chuck it about and fast acting seed. So I'm assuming that the combination of effects here is because the air obviously releases up and up here and goes out so that it's got a lot of ventilation to release the excess hot air. And then it's got a lot of lighting up top. So you really have to make sure that you're getting a lot of visible light for those plants to grow. And that's the difference I think it's made. So the way that I've sown it is literally just shake some of the seeds out of the back box and onto the floor. And then all I do is repeatedly spray it with a heavy pr uh, pressured sprayer. And just make sure that I keep it moist until it sprouts. And then as this grass matures, then I'll scale back how much I'm spraying to allow the surface to dry out again. And hopefully the, the, uh, the roots of the grass will stay humid, but the top will dry out. As it matures and strengthens, then I'll start to like spray less because it's not so delicate in my opinion. All of this is just trial and error. I'm no expert on like growing grass or anything like that. I've just chucked it in and sprayed it and hopefully made a really nutritious like soil with using like a potting mix made for growing plants as well as using the Leo Life for that clay texture and hopefully it adds to that drainage. And what's really nice is for the actual animal, let me move this, for Charlie, when the clay is moistened, it goes soft and he can dig really easily. So there's like the start of a burrow down here, digging under this board. I don't know how well you can see the burrow, but it's definitely a burrow. So he starts a burrow, he digs it out, and then over time, the soil dries out again, and then the clay goes solid. And what that means, is it holds his burrow completely. So I've seen him reusing these same burrows because they're holding structure. It's a really like nice sweet spot down here. There's another burrow as well. So he's going underneath this board, but more often than not, he's choosing not to use it. For whatever reason, he's just barely ever under there. He's always sitting around up top, either cruising around and licking everything and sniffing everything, or he sits up top basking like he is now. So for anyone that thinks that they don't need UV or shouldn't have UV or they won't even want UV, um, look at him. He's got all these areas down here to be in the shade at the back and in the corner or even under this board. And he's choosing to not only be out under lights, generically like visible light, but he's choosing to be out directly under this one T5 kit. He's choosing to bask for UV. For whatever reason, whatever he's getting from it, he's choosing to do it, which I think is really cool. When this setup matures even further, I'm going to put in a blue death feigning beetle and some giant orange isopods. But for now, I think it's in a real sweet spot and it looks real nice. So lots, of, so lots of people asked about how I was doing it and how I actually got the grass to grow. So hopefully that inspires some people to give it a go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But especially if you combine that with the watercress, you can basically like keep re that because who cares if it dies? It's going to keep shooting back and just keep shooting back. And it's cheap as well. So just keep doing it. Even if it's not even a bioactive setup, you just want like a nice like grass look. Oh well, it keeps dying. Oh well, I re -sow it. And you just keep maintaining this like fresh shoots look. And it's all cool. And who cares if it dies, you know? So that's all I have for you. I want to do some more videos on these other setups, like the one behind me here. I did this whole swinging climbing structure that's been done for a while now. But I wanted to see how well it works. 
And I think finally I'm at a point where I'm going to show you guys how I built this and also we're going to go through the Bearded Dragon's advanced lighting and his setup and her setup show. So all the things that I've been holding off on, now we're going to start filming everything and I'm going to start showing you it all. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.